This video is going to cover Pythagoras in three dimensions at National 5. Sometimes this is re um, referred to as double Pythagoras or Pythagoras for space diagonals. Either way, I'm going to show you Pythagoras involved with three dimensional shapes. So the learning attention is to be able to use Pythagoras in context, to be able to use it twice and find the length of a 3D line. Prior knowledge is you should be aware of basic Pythagoras. It would be ideal if you had already maybe seen vectors as well because that allows an alternative method which I'm going to show you in example 3. And hopefully you've all seen volume as well before because volume of a pyramid will involve a bit of 3D Pythagoras as well, and that's my example two. So example one is just focusing on a straightforward bit that's called a space diagonal. This can sometimes be a bit difficult for people to see because visually it's not the easiest. And if you're teaching this in front of a classroom, a lot of teachers come up with an actual 3D box and put a bit of string from corner to corner to help you visualize it. So we're asked to find the length of a diagonal that goes from the front of the box to the back corner of the box. So we don't necessarily have an obvious um, right angle triangle there. But what we have to do is we have to kind of look at a plane or imagine a sheet of paper going from A to G to C. And you'll see this on my next diagram. So I've added in an extra dotted line here going from A to C. And hopefully you can see that that would also create a right angle triangle because the vertical line GC is meeting with the base of the rectangle. So we've kind of got a, imagine a sheet of paper stuck in there. And that's what we're going to be using to try and find this space diagonal. To get there though, first of all, we have to find that dotted line that I've put in from A to C on the base. So what I've done in these diagrams is I've extracted the triangles I'm using. Um, a, B, C is the one that's lying flat on the ground. And I know I've drawn it from a funny perspective there. Um, and then the other triangle I've drawn is A to C to G, which is the kind of standy up one, the vertical triangle going from front to back. So what I know on this base triangle is that A to B is 40 and B to C is 25. And I know on my other one that this is 15. Now, what will happen is once I find out X, that becomes A to C, which is the base of that triangle there. So we have to get the dotted line, first of all. So this is like my part A, and then I'll get the slopey line as my part B, okay? So in both the examples, I'm actually finding a hypotenuse there. So if we go for the base triangle first, we will do the work in X squared equals 40 squared plus 25 squared. Which gives us 2,225. And then normally in Pythagoras, you would then go take the square root of this number. And you would get the answer of 47.17. Um, so rounded to 47.2. What I'm not going to do here is I'm not actually going to round that. Okay. This is approximately 47.2. But if I then go on and use that number in my next sum, rounded, I'm losing a bit of um accuracy to my answer because what i'm going to do is if i'm going to just start my next sum let's call this bit i'm after now y so y squared would be what we worked out a to c to be which was this number over here okay so i'm just going to put that bit in there so what you would normally do is you'd write y squared equals your answer then squared so i'm going to leave it as my third or my square root squared plus 15 squared and what you'll notice this happens is when you square that square root it cancels out so it's really just 2225 plus 225 um, which gives us 2450 and then we can square root that because this will be my final answer and it will give us to one decimal place 49.5 centimetres. Okay, so what I've done is here, I have, at this point here, I've used the exact answer. Um, if you were to use the rounded answer and plug that in and go with it, you would still be awarded full marks, but as a maths teacher, I like accuracy, okay, and especially further up in school, you'd be expected to use that um, the correct answer, and you've got the answer button that holds in your memory and your calculator anyway. So this is your ideal kind of space diagonal Pythagoras question, okay? Let's have a look at another. 
So sometimes um, at National 5, you can be asked to find the volume of a pyramid, which is lovely if they tell you the height of the pyramid and all the dimensions on the base. Um, but this one here, you'll notice it doesn't give you the height. Now, the formula for the volume of a pyramid is V equals one third AH. So straight away, we can work out the area if that's uh, the rectangle on the bottom, but we don't know H. So first of all, we have to get that using Pythagoras. Now, using Pythagoras, this is a space diagonal, a bit like my last question. So we're going to have to look at this right angle triangle here and then the vertical right angle triangle going from A to the middle all the way up to E. OK, so there are two options here. You could find out the length of A to C using the 20 and the 14 and then half your answer. But that's going to involve um, some rounding and losing some accuracy. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to half that first of all. So we're going to look at the triangle on the bottom with A as the corner. And this is your right angle here. So half of 20 along the base would make that 10. Half of the 14 that way would make this side 7. So we are going to use Pythagoras to work out that. So x squared is 10 squared plus 7 squared, which is 149. And the square root of 149 is, I'm going to do to one decimal place, is 12.2. Okay, however, a bit like my last example, I'm not actually going to use that answer. Okay, I'm going to go use the accurate square root of 149. So let me just take that away and I'm going to leave it as that. So Y then would be using this triangle, so the kind of tall one. So we know that A to the middle base of this um, triangle is the square root of 149 along the bottom. We want to know the height and we know that the slope in the pyramid is 15. So my work in here would be, I could use Y or I could use H, in fact, because we've already called H. So H squared equals, it's a short side this time, so it's going to be 15 squared minus the square root of 149 squared, which gives us 76. And then the square root of 76 is 8.7. And that's to one decimal place. Okay. Now, the question actually asked us to find out the volume. So, the volume would be one third times the area of the base. Now, the area of the base will be 20 times 14. 20 times 14 is 280. So the volume would be a third times 280 times the height of the pyramid, which we said was roughly 8.7 to one decimal place. So our volume would be 812 centimetres cubed. Now that's a big lengthy question, but it's possible they could ask it at National 5 to make it a wee bit more difficult than a straightforward volume of a pyramid. So just to recap what we did there is we halved the rectangle in the middle and just found from the corner to the centre. And we did Pythagoras using that. Then we used the, the vertical triangle and got the height of the pyramid. And then in the green pen, we found the volume of a pyramid using a third AH, which is given to you in your formula sheet. Okay. Okay, so this example here um, came up in an exam paper a couple of years ago and it, um, it really annoyed a lot of people because they didn't necessarily spot what it was. So obviously this locker is 70 centimetres tall. Some people just said, no, the umbrella won't fit. It's 15 centimetres too short. But using our problem solving skills, well, we should be able to realise that things can go from corner to corner, which is a bit longer than the height of the locker. So they're really looking for us to see, can this um, umbrella fit from, say, front corner to back corner. So it's asking you about the space diagonal, kind of like I did in example one. And we could, we could go do the base triangle and work out X using the 40 and the 40, and then use an answer with the 70. But what I'd like you to do is if you have seen vectors, think of this point here being your origin of zero, zero, zero. And think of this point up here as being along 40, back 40, up 70. 
we're asking you to find the distance, let's call it A and B, from A to B. We're asking you to find the magnitude of A to B. And if you've done magnitude before at vectors, you should know that this is simply the square root of 40 squared plus 40 squared plus 70 squared. Okay. Now, if you put that into a calculator, this will give you the square root of 8,100, which is 90 centimetres. So if the diagonal of the locker is 90 centimetres, can you fit an 85 centimetre umbrella in that locker? The answer is yes. So yes, it will fit. Is not an acceptable answer. Why will it fit? There must be some numerical comparison. So yes, it will fit since um, the umbrella is 85 centimetres, which is less than 90 centimetres. So you could say that, or you could say it is it will fit and have another five centimetres left over, something like that. So some kind of numerical comparison. Now, just to prove to you that this does work using the kind of magnitude of a vector way, I'm going to take you back to that first example. So here is my working for the first example. If I have a quick look at my working, what I really did here is, um, here I did 40 squared plus 25 squared. And I got the answer of this. And then I added on 15 squared. So effectively what I did there is I said my diagonal, let's call it Z this time, was 40 squared plus 20 squared, sorry, 25 squared plus 15 squared. So technically, yeah, I could have done it that way and just doing Pythagoras using three numbers. So I did 40 along the way, 25 back the way, my 15 up. And that gave me the answer of, um, if I cast my mind back, that gave me 2450. And the square root of 2450 was, of course, 49.5 centimetres to one decimal place. So this is an alternative method. Your teachers might not show you this. They might. Um, but it is possible to do 3D Pythagoras by just applying a third number into the Pythagorean um, theorem. Okay. But I would never show it unless you had seen vectors. Okay. Um, so here are some for you to try on your own. So I've got two examples here, like my pyramid ones. So I'd like you to pause the video and try to find the height and volume of these pyramids. And then on the next slide, check your answers. Now we have two of the space diagonal ones, like in my example one. So I would like you to pause the video now and try these. You can do it using base triangle and then my little red triangle. Or you could, if you've seen vectors and are happy with that method, you could do it all in one go. Square root of 10 squared, 7 squared and 4 squared for that one. Okay, so give it a wee try and again then check your answers. So what have we learned? So hopefully we've learned how to use Pythagoras in 3D using two different methods. Some questions will re uh, require you to use Pythagoras twice. And maybe this is the first time you've seen how to find the volume of a pyramid. Or maybe it's been a nice wee reminder of that as well. So thank you and good luck.